This video was made possible thanks to my generous supporters on Patreon. Thanks, guys! The most underrated US city for transit is obviously Pittsburgh. But when you've run out of videos to make about that, the next most underrated transit city, in my opinion at least, is St. Louis. So on the way to a family vacation, I decided to make a trip there. St. Louis is home to the Metrolink light rail, a two-line system that begins right here at Lambert Airport. And here it is! Okay, I know this isn't the real thing, but I admire their dedication to building something pretty interesting. You got a control panel full of buttons and switches, you got some actual seats. It's a pretty decent replica. Whatever brings you to St. Louis, we're delighted that you're here. I guess that includes transit-related nonsense. I will say the signage to the train could be better. I'm finding myself having to kind of look around and turn 180 degrees and walk in random directions to find the right signage. I kind of wish they placed it a little bit more sort of strategically for where I'm walking. So I'm standing here and looking around and the nearest Metrolink sign is all the way over there. I walked all the way down that way, went up the escalator, and now I have to walk all the way back this way? I feel like there was a sign that I missed that might have helped. Here we go. By this point, the uninitiated rider might be wondering, okay, am I lost? But no, at long last, metro information. Here's some uh, fare machines. Finally, 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 we reach. Hey! Is that average Rust Belt City enjoyer Royce from Twitter? How's it going? Let's take a look at the St. Louis metro area. The region is bisected by the Mississippi River, with Missouri on the west and Illinois on the east. The city of St. Louis is on the river's west bank, with the famous Gateway Arch located right on the waterfront. On the Illinois side, we find the communities of East St. Louis and Belleville, as well as the massive Scott Air Force Base. On the Missouri side, we have universities such as Washington University, St. Louis University, and the University of Missouri-St. Louis, as well as Clayton, which functions as the area's second downtown, and Cortex, an area of recent development. People often travel to the Del Mar Loop, Central West End, and the Grove area to shop, dine, hang out, and pass time in the nearby Forest Park. And then, of course, there's the airport, where we are. The Metrolink light rail, run by the Bi-State Development Agency, covers much of this area. The red line starts at the airport, passes the University of Missouri-St. Louis in Del Mar, heads downtown, crosses the river, and terminates at Scott Air Force Base. The blue line, meanwhile, begins at Shrewsbury Landstone, serves Clayton and Washington University, meets the red line at Forest Park, and follows it until its terminus at Fairview Heights. And here it is. Well, thank you. So tell me what this is. So this is proof of payment card. Um, what you do is you just take it and you tap it against the terminal, and then it pay your fare. Nice. Metrolink uses Siemens SD400 and SD460 light rail vehicles. Wait, you're taking over my voiceover now? Yeah. If these look familiar, that's because Pittsburgh uses the same equipment type on its light rail. The only other city in the world that uses these is Valencia, Venezuela. Pulling out of Terminal 1, we ride along an elevated track to Terminal 2, the only single tracking section of the whole Metrolink system, at least for now. As we leave the airport behind, we stop at North Hanley, a popular park and ride, then reach the University of Missouri-St. Louis, affectionately known as UMSL. It's here that we encounter the first case of something we'll see a lot of on Metrolink, repurposed right-of-way. Almost all of Metrolink is like this. Of the original 17 miles of track from downtown to the airport, only three miles were newly built right-of-way. The majority of this route was built in the old Wabash Railroad right-of-way, going from downtown into the northwestern suburbs of the city, which once carried trains from Chicago, Des Moines, Kansas City, Omaha, and elsewhere. Did our light rail just go toot? Why doesn't it go honk? Why does it go toot? Uh, there's a few that honk. There's like, they kind of replace the horns ad honk when they break, whatever. You mean ad honk? Merging with the blue line at Forest Park, we pass by its namesake park and travel in a tunnel underneath the Children's Hospital of St. Louis. Wait, if this is a repurposed right-of-way, 
Does that mean chemical-laden freight trains were regularly running under a children's hospital? Yikes! Anyways, then we reach Cortex, an area of recent development, and home to the latest station on the network, built in 2018. Just after Union Station, we round one of the only sharp, light rail-esque curves on Metrolink, then stop at Stadium, within walking distance of where the Cardinals play. And it's here that we hit some infrastructure that makes Metrolink very unique. Metrolink's downtown tunnel was built in 1874 to carry rail traffic from the lower deck of Eads Bridge through downtown and to the south. Two stations were constructed within the tunnel itself, and Stadium Station sits in the western portal. Prior to being converted to light rail, these tunnels actually carried Amtrak trains until 1974, and freight trains ran for over a decade after that. Coming out of the tunnel, we find ourselves on the lower deck of Eads Bridge. But more on that later. Alright, we have made it to Laclede's Landing, which is right near St. Louis's most famous landmark. Ah, my arch nemesis! So if I'm not mistaken, and I often am, we are inside a bridge. Is that correct? That is correct. This is the Eads Bridge that we are in. This opened in 1875, designed and named for James Buchanan Eads. Also, I'm getting some uh, deja vu to Barcelona, because there's literally a steel rail instead of a catenary here in the bridge. Hopping back on board the Blue Line, we pass back through downtown. Then we're in Terminal Railroad Association of St. Louis Territory. This is a Class 3 railroad initially formed to allow the different railroads in St. Louis to connect with each other and get along. It's also the railroad that assembled the infamous East Palestine train. Originally, it served the city's Union Station, but today that complex is a shopping center, and Amtrak trains stop at the nearby Gateway Transportation Center. We reach Forest Park shortly afterward. This station and the area surrounding it experienced damage from heavy rainfall in July 2022, causing the whole system to shut down for three days. These portions of track were originally built in trenches by the Wabash. Unfortunately, the flood mitigation measures in the trenched portion of the track were wholly insufficient for the nearly 12 inches of rain St. Louis saw across only a few hours. The damage was immense. Two trains were lost in the flood. In April of 2023, one of the flood-damaged Metrolink vehicles appeared in Marta's south yard in Atlanta, Georgia. Nobody is quite sure why it's there yet, but the leading theory is that it was sold to be part of a film shoot. Of course, we can't know for sure. Between University City Station and Forsyth stations on the Blue Line, local opposition to the Metrolink caused the entire route between stations to be tunneled. Although more expensive, this did potentially keep the Metrolink trains from street running. This is perhaps the first recorded instance of NIMBYs actually improving a transit network. If you're enjoying the video, consider supporting my Patreon. I'm a full-time grad student, and you guys are why I can do adventures like this. We hop off the train at Brentwood I-64 in search of a local delicacy. Apparently, iced custard is a thing if you're from the Midwest, and Ted Drew's is the place to get it. So this is a uh, local specialty, apparently? How is it? Delicious. Ted Drew's frozen custard is really good. It's custard and it's frozen. I got what I paid for, what actually you treated me to. Thank you. To get back to the station, we're taking De Pere Boulevard, which is a sort of proto highway from the 1920s that feels as if it hasn't been repaved since. The river, De Pere, next to it is actually an artificial river, which serves as a sanitary sewer and storm drain for the city. Among us does not love an overbuilt light rail station. Or light metro, I suppose. This is true. Like, this is maybe the one place where overbuilding your light rail actually kind of makes sense. Yeah, they, they overbuilt everything. And then they underbuilt this. Why did they got to make this so short? I mean, you are like six foot eight. From Shrewsbury Landstone, we head back up the blue line to Clayton, which is sort of St. Louis's second downtown.
So we have made it to Skinker, one of the underground stations, which is very echoey. Nice. And we are joined by... Jason. Hello, Jason. How you doing? <laughs> So what is special about this? Oh, cam reception. Nice. Huh? Built down here because of a bunch of NIMBYs who didn't want to see light rail on the road. So they were like, let's put it down underground. I'm glad they did, honestly. honestly I mean, I'm glad they were like, yeah. okay with spending a little extra money to keep it out of their sights. If the Washington Metro stations are brutalist cathedrals, this is a brutalist chapel. There you go. Danger. Live wire. for some reason. So now I'm running after them, but I'm not very fast. I'm carrying lots of things. Uh... Why are you running? Oh, there's a bus. That would explain the running. Where's my transit card? This bus parallels the controversial 2.2 mile Del Mar Loop trolley. Originally opening in 2018 using streetcars from Melbourne, the system closed the following year, but was reopened in 2022 after it was taken over by the Bi-State Development Agency same people who run Metrolink. Apparently, if the service hadn't kept going, the city of St. Louis would have had to return the millions of dollars in grants. The trolley is currently not operational. It's like a seasonal tourist August 4th. thing. Yeah. Wasn't um, it like gonna close and the state forced them to keep it open? Pretty much because they took a bunch of federal funding to build the trolley and then once they decided to close they were like, Oh yeah, the federal government's gonna want all their money back now, so they're like, let's try to re-operate this thing again, so. It's gotcha. a wonderful story. This is like the neon capital of St. Louis or something. Hi Jackson, look at all this neon, it's great. This is the best sign that has ever been made. I love this sign so much. Diner! Hey! Barry. This is Fitz's. So root beer. Doors open on the right. <laughs> to Metrolink! Metrolink. Metrolink. <laughs> so then we got toasted ravioli, which is apparently a thing here in St. Louis. Do you have any idea why? I do not know the history on it. I should. Royce didn't, didn't do his research. research. I don't know the history. Do you know the history? I wish I knew. Jason didn't do his research. And I didn't look it up before I came here. <laughs> Seriously, why is no one doing research? research? I was like, wow! What is this wizardry? Thank you. Thank you so much. I will never eat regular ravioli again. I'm sorry, this, this is amazing. What was I missing for 24 years of my life? So, dinner has been had, and now we are going to ride the Illinois side of Metrolink. Royce has described this as taking a long distance Amtrak train, except there's no seat cushions or bathrooms. Why does the Illinois side of Metrolink exist? Illinois likes to throw money at things. Except Especially for Metro. Running for things again. Oh no. Oh shoot. Ah. Phew. Did you know that Metrolink is the only light rail system to cross a state border in the US? Less impressive when you consider that the Basel Switzerland light rail goes to three countries. After we cross the Mississippi River, we're now in the great state of Illinois. We ride through East St. Louis and Belleville, using right-of-way once owned by the Louisville and Nashville. You can't see it since it's dark, but there are long stretches between stations with basically nothing, and transit advocates have criticized this part of Metrolink for catering to Illinois politicians' whims over prioritizing where people need to go. At least, this lets our train hit its maximum speed of 65 miles per hour. Finally, at long last, we pull into the station for Scott Air Force Base. They're currently planning an extension from here to the infamous Mid-America Airport, on the other side of the base. And here we are at Shiloh Scott Air Force Base. We have now ridden the entirety of the St. Louis Metro Link. So here's our train. Here are Jason and Royce foaming. And then there's the normal parking lot. Over here we have the Scott Air Force Base. Hopefully I don't get arrested for filming this. Um, they have bus shelters inside the secure fenced-in parking lot, and then they have a uh, cannon in the parking lot of a light rail station. I love Metrolink. 
also further that way is the Mid-America St. Louis Airport, a notorious ghost airport that for a while had no flights and now has like Allegiant and that's it. And they want to extend the light rail there eventually. Uh, who knows when that's going to happen. Right now there's supposedly an on-demand shuttle that will take you from here to there. And uh, I actually value my time, so I did not try to use it. On the ride back, our operator recognizes me from my Silverline video, and he lets me stand at the front and film this shot. As we cross back into Missouri, you can tell we're on the lower deck of Eads Bridge, which also carries vehicular traffic on the upper deck. Then we're back in the tunnel, which you can see uses sandstone and brick arch construction. During Metrolink construction, this segment of tunnel collapsed and was replaced with a, a more modern cut and cover tunnel. And here we are back in the airport. It's about 10 p.m. My flight is at 5.55 a.m. So I'm just gonna camp out here for a bit and I'll see you in the morning. So what are my final thoughts on the St. Louis Metrolink? Well, I've got to say that overall, I was really impressed. Metrolink pushes the concept of a light rail to its limits, creating a system that's less oversized streetcar and more light metro. A lot of that is due to its clever use of infrastructure, such as the downtown tunnel and all the reused rights of way that just so happen to go where people need trains. It's fast, reliable, and convenient. With 20,000 riders a day in the fourth quarter of 2022, Ridership is decent when you view it as a light rail, but not great when you view it as a metro. Hopefully, St. Louis will invest in its transit over the next years, since it has the bones of a good system. They are planning a new north-south light rail line in the near future. But more than anything, visiting St. Louis left me with one big question. Were they insanely lucky to have all of this abandoned right-of-way lying around to build a system out of? Or do other cities just not take advantage of their abandoned infrastructure? Could places like Pittsburgh, Kansas City, or Baltimore reclaim abandoned tunnels and tracks for their transit? If you can think of examples, let me know in the comments. So, here in Chicago, I just so happened to run into my sister. Surprise! What, what? a coincidence! This is Wild. totally not like we scheduled this. Anyways, we're gonna go ride some more trains. Please stand clear of the doors. You didn't stand clear of the doors! I stood sort of clear. I took half a step back and they were crunchy granola hiker people. They could manage stepping around me. Did you just insult your fellow passengers? That is the highest compliment. 